Hello, are you studying for your securities exam, either the SIE, Series 6, or Series 7, especially the SIE? Well, do you need to learn about preferred stock? Well, we're going to cover that in this video, and be sure to stick around to the end, where we'll do a practice question to get you ready to pass that test. Let's get started. Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about preferred stock. Now, if you haven't seen our video on common stock, and I'll reference it right up there if you haven't seen it, or it's link in the video description. If you haven't seen it, take a look at it. But today we're going to talk about preferred stock. Now, preferred stock, which is called a senior stock, is also something that you can definitely see on this test. So let's talk about some of the key points about preferred stock to get you ready for that. Okay. So what is a preferred stock? Preferred stock, they refer to a senior stock simply because what? It's one notch up in the liquidation list on the test. In other words, what is the order of payout if a company goes out of business and they're selling off all their assets? Who gets paid first? Who gets paid last? Well, it's wages, taxes, debt, bonds, and then it's stock. And in the stock, which is the last in that list, you have preferred stock, and then finally you have common stock. So because it's one step above common stock, it's considered senior stock. It is, however, still below all of the debt. It's really kind of like a bond. Preferred stock is really like a bond that has no maturity date. It's what we call interest sensitive, which means that what? It's people that are looking for income that's going to want to have a preferred stock. You have a par value of here, $100, not $1,000 like you have in a bond. And that dividend amount, of course, will be stated on the certificate when that preferred stock certificate is issued. Now, unlike common stock, preferred stock has no voting rights and it has no preemptive rights. It's technically stock, but it's not really considered to be an ownership purchase. The idea of buying preferred stock is for the dividend. Preferred stock pay a generally fixed set dividend, which is very much like the interest that a bond pays. So you might get a dividend that pays $6 for every preferred stock, which is essentially the same thing you would get with a 6% bond. There the par is a thousand, so you'd get $60 of interest. Here the par is a hundred, so you'd get $6 of interest. But it's really kind of that same thing. Now technically it's not interest, it's dividend. Now that dividend rather than interest is a big deal as well because interest is taxed at ordinary income. Dividends can sometimes be taxed at a lower rate. Here are the benefits of owning preferred stock. With preferred stock, you have dividend preference, which means what? You get your dividend ahead of any common stockholder dividend. You also, as I mentioned on the previous slide, you have what? Priority at dissolution. So if the company is liquidated or goes out of business, that liquidation order that you definitely need to know for the test, which is what? wages, taxes, debt, and stock. But with stock, you're what? You're the preferred stock. So you're one step ahead of the common stock. So you do have that priority in the example of the company being liquidated. So what are the risks or the downside of preferred stock? Well, first off, you have purchasing power risk or inflation risk. Why? Because a preferred stock pays a fixed set dividend. So if you had a bond, for example, a bond's going to pay what? A certain coupon rate, which means that what? If it's a 6% bond, it's going to pay what? $60 every year until it matures. Well, a preferred stock might pay $6 per year. Remember, it doesn't mature. And the par is 100. So that $6 represents what? 6% of the $100 investment but it's fixed. It's not going to change over time in most cases. So you have that inflation risk. Then you have interest rate sensitivity. This is just like income oriented bonds. The teeter totter thing, 
that we'll talk about in the bond video means that what? When interest rates go up, bond prices and preferred stock prices will go down. When interest rates go down, bond prices what? Go up or preferred stock prices will go up, just like the bonds. Then we have decrease or no dividend income. The dividends in common stock and the dividends preferred stock is not guaranteed. So you might miss a few dividend payments. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And then priority at dissolution. Well, yes, it's one step ahead of common stock, but it's behind all of the bonds or all the other debt payments that have to be made in a liquidation or a bankruptcy. Now, let's talk about the two types of preferred stock. You have straight, and straight means what? Straight means you're gonna get a dividend, that set fixed dividend that's stated on the preferred stock certificate. But if the company misses any dividend payments, then those dividend payments are never ever going to be made up. You're just out that money. You're not going to get it. On the other hand, a cumulative preferred stock is going to pay dividends in arrears. Now, what does that mean? That means if for whatever reason, that preferred stock doesn't pay the dividend that it's supposed to, then before it pays anybody else in the future, any of the cumulative preferred stockholders get paid first any dividends that are due or dividends in arrears. So that means that yes, you're gonna miss some dividend payments every now and again, but they're gonna to have to make that up eventually so that you're gonna get that money down the road. Now, these are the two types of preferred stock. Everything else is a feature or a benefit tied to one of these two types of preferred stock. Now, let me ask you this here. Which of these two is going to have the lower interest rate? Well, less risk means less reward. More risk means more reward. So which one of these two is more risky? Which one of these is less risky? Well, the cumulative obviously is less risky because although you might miss some dividend payments, you'll get those dividends and arrears. That also means that for what? For the issuer that's selling that cumulative stock, that issuer is going to be able to what? Be able to issue that preferred stock at a lower interest rate because there's less risk being taken on by the investor. Now, one of the features here of preferred stock is that it sometimes is callable. Now, callable means what? At some future date, the issuer can call that stock back or force the stockholder to sell that stock back to the corporation. In other words, they're gonna redeem it. And why would they do that? Well, let me ask you this. When do people refinance their mortgages? When interest rates go down or when interest rates go up? Obviously they refinance when interest rates go down. So they can what? So they can pay less monthly payment on their debt. Well, corporations are exactly the same way. So if interest rates go down in the marketplace, a corporation might be tempted to do what? Call all of their preferred stock or call their bonds and then either issue new ones or sell new ones to other people so that they're what? So that they are paying less every month for their debt. Another option here is convertible. We'll see the same option with bonds as well. And this one means that what? The preferred stock can be traded for a certain number of shares of common stock. You don't buy preferred stock in order to be able to have the stock appreciate in value. You buy it to what? You buy it to receive that set fixed dividend. But if it's a stock that is going to really grow over time, you might be tempted to convert that to that common stock. Another feature of preferred stock is that preferred stock can be an adjustable rate, which means it would be tied to some sort of benchmark or outside index so that the interest rate that it pays can change over time. Another feature is that it can be participating. Now, a participating preferred stock is a stock that's gonna pay not only 
the promised preferred stock dividend, but if the common stockholders are gonna receive a dividend, you get that one as well. You would get both the preferred stock dividend and the common stock dividend, but only if the common stockholders get that dividend. Now, another thing that's really important to understand or know is the order of the dividend payout. And the order of the dividend payout would be what? The cumulative would be paid in arrears. So if there's any cumulative stockholders out there that have not been paid yet, they get paid first. Then any straight or non-cumulative dividend would need to be paid. And then when everybody's caught up with the straight preferred stock, then a participating or common stockholder would then receive whatever extra dividend the company wanted to hand out. Now, a couple of test subject alerts. And when we see these test subject alerts, that means what? This is something that's probably on the test. Really focused on the SIE here, so probably on the SIE test. For investors that are looking for income through preferred stock, adjustable rate would be the least appropriate choice. Now, why is that? We talked a moment ago about which one has a lower interest rate, cumulative or straight. Well, cumulative is gonna have that lower interest rate because it's what? Less risk. Now, these features that we add on don't really raise or lower risk, at least most of them. The callable does, but the other ones don't. But if you have a feature, just like features on your car, that means you pay more for them. And an adjustable rate would be a feature that somebody would pay more for. Well, how would they pay more when what they're doing is receiving money? Well, they would pay more by what? They would pay more by accepting a lower interest rate on an adjustable rate preferred stock. And if what you're looking for is income, getting a lower interest rate might not be the ideal thing. So that means that what? If an investor is looking for income through preferred stock, an adjustable rate preferred stock would probably not be the best choice. Here's another test subject alert that says, preferred stock represents ownership in a company like common stock, although we don't really think of it that way because it doesn't appreciate, but its price is sensitive to interest rates, just like the price of a bond. Now, it's ownership, so that means that what? It's not going to mature or endow, like a bond does. But on the other hand, it's not going to appreciate like common stock does, unless you're what? Unless you have a convertible stock. We talked about the teeter-totter thing, and we'll see this again when we do the bond video. Preferred stock, just like bonds, means what? If the interest rate goes down, the preferred stock or the bond price goes up, and the opposite is true as well. Now, let's finish up this with a practice question. Question says, which of the following types of preferred stock typically has the highest stated rate or of dividend? all other factors being equal. Now, this one's a little tricky because I said that what? Straight's gonna have a higher rate than cumulative because what? Because straight has more risk. And I also said that the features like participating and callable are generally gonna cost you more because they don't really add the risk. But callable really kind of adds risk. It adds what? Call risk. And because it adds call risk, then the answer is going to be D here, because it what? So if that stock is gonna be called at some future date, to compensate for that possibility, the issuer would have to pay a higher dividend for that callable preferred stock. Let's do another question here. This one says, which would you expect to have a higher stated rate? Well, this one's a little more straightforward because they're just offering you two choices, straight or cumulative, and we already know that what? Straight's gonna be more risky. So straight's gonna have a higher dividend for that risk versus reward payoff. Remember, we gotta know that order of payout, which is what? Dividends and arrears, stated dividends, preferred stockholders, and then the common dividend, and remember participating also participate in that common dividend. Well, that wraps up that subject, and I hope that helps you folks. And if it did, please give us a like. It'd be great if you could subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when we got new videos coming out. And if you would like, please check out mortonschools.com. There we have 
classes for insurance licensing, securities licensing, continuing education for insurance. And as always, folks, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you on the next one.